when I start on a character like this, I like to get Maya to do a lot of the work for me. So a good way to do that is to use lattices, and then I do kind of a painting technique. And basically I want to get a way to stretch all of my points uniformly and in a very predictable manner. So that's when the lattice comes in. I mean, the lattice isn't going to be as art directed as I need, but it's a good way to get things roughly in place to where I want them. So what I do is uh, I duplicate the character. I'm going to apply a lattice. Animation, create the former's lattice. So basically where I want to control the character is right around the corner of his mouth, because that's going to be what's driving in these shapes. So all I do is adjust the divisions. And then if you move the lattice and the lattice base, then you're able to position it where you want. I'm actually going to up this a little bit. There we go. And we probably want to give a little bit in there. Up to the ear here is going to be kind of our area of influence or the area that's affected by this. And you can even add a little bit of ear tug, which we might do a little bit later. That kind of helps sell the shapes as well. A lot of that depends on the design of your character. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to place my lattice so that I have a control point right on the corner of the mouth, right there. And I'm going to have the other points, so I'm going to select those both again, we're going to scale down a bit. So I know this is about to where I want the influence to end, and I know I'm going to want to get control of his cheek. So I have these three points here that are going to be helpful for me. So all I'm doing now is I'm bringing up the smile. I know that it's going to have to go up and back a little bit, because we're going to be going around the teeth. So normally on the smile, I add a little bit of this motion into it. We also have, you know, a wide control that's going to be doing only this. But I like to add a little bit of into the smile here just because it feels better when it moves. Because really on the smile you're only going to go wide. It's not too often a character does like a narrow smile. I think right about here. And what I'll do now is I'll just scrub the envelope with the lattice. Just to get a feel for the motion. Cool. So this is all working well. So now I'm going to want to get a little bit of this stuff to be pushed out this way. So it's going to be going away from the corner because it's pushing it out. And also a little bit forward because we're going to have a little bit of flesh bunching. And all this I'm doing right now is really, really rough. And we're going to fine tune definitely. But I just want to get a feel for the motion while I'm sculpting. So I can feel now this flesh is being pushed away but also bunching up. And the cool thing about this technique is I'm getting a lot of play even way down here. And while it's very minimal, once you have textures or your materials on there, it's going to sell just kind of a bit more of like a lifelike quality if you have these points nudging just a little bit. So when saying that, I'm actually going to do a little bit more. We're getting pretty good. That might have been a little too much. Maybe a little bit there. Maybe a little bit there. I'm actually going to push this back in a little bit more. And now we're going to raise this a little bit. And also this one. So basically I want to just get a feel for this motion and just make sure this all feels natural. Everything's moving about the speed I want it to. Actually, I know it's going a little bit more. I'm going to grab this point and have it go a little bit out. Cool, so real quickly we have this. It doesn't look great. <laughs> But it's a good kind of start shape. I found this helped my workflow out a ton at work when I started doing all my shapes kind of broad like this. And then I refined from there. 